Hi, this is Melindy from Paris Living. And today uh, we are gonna talk about the price per square meter in Paris. Um, now, the price per square meter uh, is an important number. It's an important reference. Um, and uh, it is an important indicator um, of the property value in any given neighborhood or, or in Paris overall. So currently, according to the uh, Chambre des Notaires de Paris, the um, average cost uh, per square meter is 10,300 euros. But we'd have to add to that about 5% um, commissions approximately which brings us to 10,800 and change. So round it up to around 11,000 per square meter. That's the average uh, across Paris, but we have to keep in mind also that um, there are in those numbers, anything from a four bedroom apartment to a studio, to a parking spot, to um, a maid's room, so it, um, it really is an average. <clears throat> um, the more uh, interesting number is going to be the um, price per square meter in the specific neighborhood where you're looking. And in the more central neighborhoods, it's, it can be upwards of around 15,000. That would be in the sixth around Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Um, that is probably the most expensive neighborhood in Paris. And uh, there are other properties that can sell upwards of 20,000 per square meter, but those would be very, very uh, special properties. For example, maybe a, a rooftop that has a huge garden, or um, it could be a hotel particulier, which means um, a mansion, it used to be a, a private residence. Um, and, uh, or it could be an apartment with uh, that atelier glass um, facing the Seine. Um, so there are properties where people are, that are very special, um, where people are ready to throw down um, a lot of money, or on Avenue Montaigne, for example. Uh, so, but for the rest of, um, for the rest of us, uh, um, who have a limited budget, um, the price per square meter is, like I said, it's important. It's an important indicator. It's an important reference, but we can't get too hung up on it because all square meters are not created equal. Um, and that is due to one very basic thing and that's the layout. So, uh, in an apartment where the layout is optimized and there, there is not one single square meter that is lost, then that apartment is going to be more valuable than an apartment that is technically the same size but has a long hallway and uh, that you couldn't put a bookcase in, you couldn't, can't do anything with it. And it could be five square meters that are just lost. So, so when we uh, just do a very basic calculation uh, of the value of an apartment just on the number of square meters, um, that is necessarily going to be off. There are way too many other factors that impact the value of an apartment. Uh, for example, light, natural light, that's a big one. Um, uh, the, um, if there's an elevator, elevator is going to increase property value. If it's quiet, uh, that's going to increase property value. Most people don't want to be uh, on the first floor facing uh, a busy avenue. Um, high ceilings. So that uh, brings us to cubic meters, which is different. Now, I mean, you can't necessarily do anything up there if you have very high ceilings, but you do enjoy the space. So an, apar an apartment with high ceilings is more valuable than an apartment with standard, standard height ceilings. Um, when you walk into one, you feel it. 
and um, and it adds value. Now, in a bedroom, in one of those apartments, for example, you could have a custom-made cabinet that went all the way to the ceiling, and that would provide a lot of storage, which is always a problem in uh, city apartments. So in that sense, you could take advantage of the ceiling height. Um, in my apartment, we have high ceilings. So in my daughter's bedroom, she has um, a loft bed. Uh, her desk is underneath and in her bed, she can actually stand up. So, you know, they're uh, having high ceilings. Um, so cubic square meters uh, is also um, a, a factor in assessing the value of an apartment. Um, what else? How about uh, a balcony or a terrace? Or if you're on the ground floor, a garden? Now, um, those are specific cases because anything outside the actual apartment is considered common property. It's the property of the building, but you would have what's called a jouissance exclusive, so you would have the exclusive right to enjoy it, and uh, that would be written in black and white in the building bylaws, in the description of the unit. So no one else would have, would ever have access to it. Um, and uh, however, you are not technically the owner of it. Um, and in any case, it adds value to the, the unit. And there is a calculation um, we call any outside area. Um, we do a calculation uh, on the surface pondéré, and I won't get into it because it's too boring. Um, <laughs> but um, um, suffice it to say that if an apartment has a balcony, balcony, terrace, garden, that is clearly going to increase the value, and there's a calculation for that. Um, let's see, what else uh, would um, increase the value? The type of building. If it is a gorgeous Osmanian building, uh, that is not necessarily uh, when you're in your own apartment, you don't see it, but that it will increase the property value as opposed to if your apartment was inside a more sort of average older building. So also the, 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 the period of architecture, um, the kind of building that will uh, have an impact on the uh, value of the property. So basically the gist is that um, we see an, an apartment, we see a listing, we, see, we look at the asking price, but then we have to go and make our own assessment. And our own assessment is going to be based on the optimization of the layout uh, and then all of the other um, uh, things that I've listed, like natural light, elevator, what type of building, what state the apartment is in, does it need renovation? Can it be, can the layout be optimized with some renovation or are there bearing walls that prevent that? So sometimes uh, an apartment will have what I would call um, a fatal flaw if, and I've seen this many times, a one bedroom where the living room is smaller, like considerably smaller than the bedroom and there's a bearing wall in between them. So you want to, would want it the other way around. You'd want the bedroom to be smaller and the, and the, and the living room slash dining area to be bigger, but you can't because there's a bearing wall. So that would decrease the value of the property. Uh, which brings me just to a last point about, um, about properties in general and, and the, the value um, of properties when we assess them is that uh, there are things that you can change. And there are things that you can't change. So things you can change are going to be on the inside of the apartment. You can renovate, you can, if there's no moldings, you can put in moldings. You, if there's no fireplace, you can go to the Marché aux Puces and buy a beautiful uh, marble fireplace for a few hundred euros. It won't work, but it'll be beautiful. You can buy a big gold mirror for a few hundred euros. Um, so you can uh, do a lot 
on the inside cosmetically and also if you uh, have the budget and it's technically feasible to do a renovation that would optimize the space, then that would add real value to the apartment. Um, and then, so there are a lot of things that you can change about a property. But then there's thing you can't, things that you can't change. You can't change a first floor to a fourth floor. You can't change um, a building that doesn't have an elevator and doesn't have the technical feasibility to install one uh, to a building with an elevator. Um, you can't change a, um, you know, cute little, um, Pierre de Paris, uh, building to, uh, um, to, a Osmanian, you know, elaborate facade. There are, um, uh, you know, things, uh, that you, structural things that you cannot change. So, um, you have to think about that. And again, most people say, well, when you're inside your apartment, you don't have to look at the building. But um, most people like to come home to a nice lobby, a nice entrance, uh, and whether it matters to them or not, it does impact the, the uh, price of the unit uh, for you know one day down the road when it's time for resale. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the deal on uh, price per square meter. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them below. Um, I hope everybody is well, and next time I will talk about the copropriété in Paris. It functions like a condominium, and uh, but it's not exactly the same. So I'll talk about how the copropriété functions and, um, and go through the differences between um, how a building is run here uh, versus uh, North America, for example. Okay, take care.